One of the worst things that could ever happen to Darth Vader was for him to be reminded of his past. Well, unfortunately, not only was he reminded of the past by going to Geonosis, but he actually needed to relive all those painful moments that he tried so much to forget. This period is after the Death Star's destruction, so by now it's been 20 years since all the memories of his wife, Padme Amidala, had started to fade finally, but this journey made it quite hard to do that. His trip to Geonosis would mean facing a moment in time in his life where he was the happiest of all. He prepared to die, but at least the love of his life at that time professed her love for Anakin Skywalker, who now was long forgotten and lost, mangled and twisted into a half-man, half-machine called Darth Vader. And in the midst of all this pain, zombified B-1 battle droids attacked the Sith Lord and his companions, to which they had a quick response. Despite having to listen to Avra talk more than Vader could handle, we are made apparent that the former Jedi clearly remembers what happened on this planet decades ago and what he ultimately lost. That's besides the point when it comes to Vader. He in fact had begun a collaboration of sorts with Dr. Aphra since she was the only person capable of finding Vader that which he truly wanted. A new army who would be unflinchingly loyal, something he felt he was losing from the Empire, as at that time after the destruction of the Death Star, Vader felt his favor with the Emperor fading away. The Emperor had cast him aside for future prospects. Because of all this, Aphra and Vader arrive on Geonosis where it's told that underneath the catacombs there is still an active factory producing droids daily, similar to the Separatist ones during the Clone War. Once they enter the caves, BT and Triple Zero start to map out the place and surely enough they arrive at a closed area where suddenly weird abnormal Geonosian droid hybrids appear in front of them. While Triple Zero is briefly startled, BT simply tortures them all to death without a moment's thought. However, what they had just encountered was definitely something strange that they did not expect. Aphra is simply fascinated. She goes on to examine these hybrid droids and clearly understands that there is an active factory still operating, still making droids. She comes to the conclusion that the Queen, as a desperate measure for her species not to die off, has been producing and reproducing these modified droids just as means of survival. They were not ready to witness what they saw next. The Queen had become a literal droid factory, reproducing eggs that would hatch out Geonosian B-1 droids, a hybrid if you will. Vader quickly jumped behind the Queen and amputated the part that was attached to the mechanical womb factory. Although the Queen was injured, she was not about to give up. She claimed that once they destroyed their past, but now the Empire wanted to destroy their future as well. The Queen yelled at her children to hunt these intruders down and kill them one by one. With the help of VT and Triple Zero, the army was torched just before reaching Vader, and once the Sith helped Aphra get the locator attached to the roof, the Archangel made an opening where Vader's personal Nubian starship came down and attached the mechanical factory which the Queen referred to as her womb exclaiming, screaming to bring her children back, that her empire was going to be forever, but with no avail. Lori Vader and Aphra left the system with what they came for, now the real work would begin. Not long after, BT and Aphra got it working successfully, creating a single BX series droid commando that Triple Zero examined. This would be a simple test in what would result in Vader's ultimate goal of obtaining an off-the-grid army of his own. Most importantly, loyal to death. Later on, these droids would help Vader in numerous missions, the most notable one being the war on Shutoru, where the droids helped turn the tide of the battle to Vader's favor. They would be used sparsely here and there afterwards, but Vader's interests shifted after the Sith learned that he had a long-lost son. Now, all he was 
was focused on was to get the young Jedi on his side and really have a chance at taking down his master. But what's going on underneath Darth Vader, it's what's the most important thing here, is that for a long time he felt betrayed by the Jedi and now again he is feeling betrayed by his master as well, by Darth Sidious, who promised him a better future, a brighter and more powerful future where Darth Vader would hold power in his hands, unlike the Jedi who forbade him to grab that power with both hands. Anakin back then knew he was powerful enough to be the best Jedi in the Jedi Council and in the Jedi Temple alone, but he still believed in their disciplines and traditions that the Jedi had adhered to for thousands of years. Now, with Sith ruling the galaxy and Sidious granting Vader unlimited power, well, it did not turn out so great as Sidious still manipulated his apprentice into just servitude to him and his new empire. And as you can see by these comics, 20 years later, he was still chasing his own tail. Darth Vader had had enough and that's why he joined with Dr. Aphra in order to create a sort of a new empire of his own. Darth Vader wanted his own army, his own finances, and if need be, he would go up against his own master and destroy the empire that Sidious had built for all this time. Needless to say, Vader could have been successful simply because he knew the ins and outs of this empire and he knew the people necessary to be involved. Sadly, it never came to that, but it would be an interesting notion. In that, thank you guys so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up down below, subscribe for dailies. Now you have an awesome day, Star Wars fans. I'll see you in the next video and may the Force be with you. Until then.